Well, with this guy, you should be able to see me in there, right? And the red, orange, and yellow guy. So this is the real deal, by the way. This is a FLIR. So this is what firemen use to actually help save people. Um, what we're looking for in here are the blue and black spots. So the blue and black are going to be the colder areas. It, they're either going to take shape or start moving on their own. I also have this set up to where there's a blue dot bouncing around the screen. That blue dot is going to show you the coldest spot in the frame at that particular moment. So when you get your video back, you kind of have a, a guide of where the coldest spots are actually going to be. So we're going to be recording periodically throughout the nights because as great as the hardware is, the software sucks. If you record for too long, we're going to lose footage. So, Chuck, you seem like you're super interested in this. You're, like, staring at it, like, profusely, like, he's like, I'm on that one. Um, so I'm going to have you hold this horizontal all night long with the camera on your left. I'll let you know the starts and stops, which is obviously the red square. And your finger went right over the camera, which is what everybody does. Where is it? On the left-hand side, lower left-hand corner. There you go. go it's yeah, it's safe to hold it one-handed. Boy, you're just hot. Like a cell phone. Thank you. Yeah, oh, knows how to okay. And I'm normally the one with the cold heart. That's usually the next joke that comes out. So. Actually, it was bluer right there when you were holding it. Yeah. I thought about that one. Like, oh. That's a good joke. You can throw them out there. We're out here to have fun, right? Here's the whole point. Uh, let's see. The next crazy camera. Yes, this Ghostbuster looking thing. Looks like it's supposed to go in your head. It does, doesn't it? It actually has a handle right where my left hand is. So quick demo with this guy, not very exciting as first, but you should not be able to see me in that black screen on the GoPro. So let's turn on some lights. We are working with infrared lighting here. So I just lit up 24 LED, or LED torches to be able to light up the entire screen purple. These are lights you can't see with your own eyes. That would be the red here and the four on the, on the front of the camera. The hope here is that we're going to be able to capture something we would not normally be able to see with our own eyes. So the cool thing about this is this is kind of a two-person job. Um, the other person that's going to be working along with this camera is going to have lasers. So that way we can detect any motion that goes through it. I'm going to demo those next. So with that said, Gil was it? Uh -huh. Look at me. You're going to get this guy. So it's like me remembering names. It is an important job. So, so this is the neuralizer for Men in Black. None of you are going to remember anything by the time we're done. You're supposed to <laughs> stay right there. That's a, that's a joke, everybody. You're supposed to chuckle. Right lasers. Like I said. <laughs> it's okay. It's why we record for everything. Lasers. The whole point of the lasers is because the camera that I just handed over to Gil, you can't see the lasers until something actually passes through it. So the hope here is that something's going to go through it quickly, and I'll be able to capture a still from it and be able to show you exactly what we caught. We're going to be using two different style of lasers. The second one gives us red squares. In the event we capture something here, I can put it in 3D software and give you a full 3D view of what we caught, along with any type of measurements around ah. that entity. So this guy is a lot of fun. Um, it can be a little dry and boring, but at the same time, this way, when we have these larger groups like this, like parties of four and five, you move things around. That way everybody kind of gets a chance to work on everything. So, Unia, these are going to go to you because lasers stay in the hands of adults. Just so you know, when you're using them, the button for this guy is right here. You have to hold it. Make sure a laser is always touching your shoe so that way you can kind of keep them in control. So the red one has a, like a light switch. So once it's on, it's on. So be careful not to like shoot and shine cars and things like that. Make sure it's off before you start moving around. Again. No, no pressure at all. I know, right? There is a laser law in Charleston. Spirit boxes. We're going to be using several different types of spirit boxes tonight. Um, spirit boxes, if you're unfamiliar with these, this is a way for us to communicate with the dead. So this one in particular is going to be just like the ones you see on your TV shows with the white noise and then your host tells you what he thinks he heard in the middle of it. However, mine are slowed down. Again, we're working with beginner methods here. None of you are trained to listen to white noise for two hours. Somebody's going to fall asleep, especially with all the history I'm going to throw at you. So, this is allowing the radio chatter to come through. So any kind of DJ, song, lyrics, commercials, that kind of thing. So Melinda's very stoked. Can everybody guess where this one's going to go? Um, so what you're listening for are those DJs and song lyrics. It's kind of like Bumblebee from Transformers, right? They're right. The ghosts are using this as their voice. So if you hear like, hey, buy a Kia today, I want to know that you heard buy a Kia today. Okay. Um, so Ooh. the cool thing is that she's going to be the only one to hear it in real time. She's going to have an earbud in. However, it's recording the entire session for you. I'm gonna actually give you the entire recording back tomorrow. I'm gonna to be writing down whatever Melinda hears in real time, and then I'll be spot checking it for myself. So you're gonna kind of have both of what we hear on your notes tomorrow morning. Earwax is gross, that's your souvenir. I don't want them back. Okay. <laughs> your volume button is right here. It's a wheel, I'm just making sure it's turned all the way down so that way when you pop in your earbud, it doesn't blast you. So okay. pop one of those in and get used to the volume of it. And you can mess with the volume all okay. you want to. It doesn't mess with the recording. 
bro. Right, should be fine. <laughs> I used two of these, but this one's not going to record. So the reason why we do that is because it is still a lot of fun to actually have an extra one of these. I'll be writing down whatever this person hears in real time. Um, so Gabby, I think this one's going to go to you. She's like, yeah, I thought that was cool. Uh, so with that one, uh, again, earwax is gross. Your volume button is right here. It's a wheel. So kind of just make sure it's turned all the way down. We use lots of spirit boxes. Let's break out the next one. This one we don't actually have to listen to. This one is going to replace, if you're familiar with the TV shows, what they call an obelisk. It's going to give us words from time to time in the center of the screen based off of radio stations and whatever it recognizes. So with this one, it's going to save all of those terms to a list with timestamps. This is the first thing I go through when I'm going through your data because it kind of tells me where to watch the videos, where to listen to spirit box recordings. Um, again, this is a phone app. So 80% of this is going to be garbage. I'm just going to put it out there right now. Again, I'm not here to make anything up. So the word list... see every word that pops up I'll come to you when I want to see the list which is the little white box next to the word so again that's how you get to it you'll be able to scroll through it see the boys over here are getting really really anxious so <laughs> just a little bit this one this is brand new this isn't even being shown on the TV shows yet um, this one is called an envoy but basically in a nutshell it is a digital Ouija board so it's going to basically move through the cursor of letters and whenever an EMF spike occurs, it will stop on a letter and save it to the little bottom line so that way we can make out anagrams, full initials, or any other words that want to be spoken. We haven't caught much with this guy yet. However, it's brand new to the market. The ghosts don't even know how to use it yet. Like, it's like I'm training them on how to use it. It's a stupid thing. So again, it's an electronic piece. So with this one, you look super stoked. Like he's like yeah, bouncing around. I love the excitement, guys. It's awesome. Uh, let's see, let's see. <laughs> All right, you guys have seen these on TV, right? So these are the basic staple of every ghost hunt. We use these to actually debunk a lot of things. So again, this is an EMF detector. It's going to measure any electricity in the air. So that includes from your cell phones, wiring, buildings, that kind of thing. So because this is such a simple job, and the only thing I'm going to need um, is basically, I am losing your name. How did I lose your name? Karen, got it. It was quiet. <laughs> she was very quiet. <laughs> so Karen, because this is so simple, I just want to know what colors you're seeing. I already have the measurements memorized based on what color it is, but you're also going to be taking hundreds and hundreds of pictures for us. So this is a digital camera with no flash. So you have to be very still when you're taking photographs. So, so that way, when I'm going through them, I don't have a bunch of blur going through. Too hard to detect any kind of you know, and then, you know, anomalies coming through. So again, hundreds and hundreds of pictures, and let me know whatever colors you see in that guy. You're gonna be double twisted. Look at you guys, you guys got like the most stuff over here. <laughs> All right, so, uh, let's see, let's see. So this guy, the last spirit box, is an older style. So this older style spirit box has an open speaker because earbuds don't really work well with it. Um, so with that, Brody, right? So Brody, I'm giving you guys an open air because Chuck actually has uh, a video recorder. So you might want to stick close to him. So if you miss something, it'll show up on his audio. So that way you guys can actually, you guys actually have a lot of communication devices. The way yours works, the volume's on the side of the ball speaker. You'll have to feel for it, but it's a roll up and hold to get the volume out of it, roll down and hold to turn it down. It just takes a few seconds. So just kind of be patient with it. I'll always let you know when it's safe to actually turn yours up. You guys are breaking out all my equipment, so I like almost forgot like which pieces I was using tonight. I already had two minutes. It's good. What do you have? Uh, B and what? B and what? B Y. B Y. Bye. Uh, D. Somebody Ghost is leaving. So bye. Bro, <laughs> Tomer, was it? So your spirit box works a lot differently too. This is also an open air. So basically, in a nutshell, this is scanning through both FM and AM radio stations at the same time, and it's going to try to take out the white noise that Gabby and Amanda are listening to. So with yours, again, it's hopefully only going to give you words, and it's only going to give you about 10 to 12 words total. However, this is our most accurate spirit box. This is about 75% accurate to our location. So the only thing you need to worry about is the mute button. The mute button is on the right-hand side, so again, you just click it once to unmute it, and it'll start you know, spitting out any type of words that are coming. 
through. Thank I'm going to keep it on mute because we're going to be near pony soon. Yeah, no I'll let idea. you know when it's safe to unmute yours. So you guys no all sit on your end. Are we all in the I think I'm going to need something. You get to carry the bag. I need, yeah, no. I need that. Listen, I need something. <laughs> You're hiding. Oh, no, no, no. That's not the way this works. So. Uh, you in there? Your device. Yeah. It's the multifunction device. Uh, that really hurts when it's dark. Oh, there you go. So the cool thing is, is the people that actually have the red spear boxes with the earbuds, you can also share the other earbud with somebody else. So just tow it around with. This particular device, everybody, is called a millimeter. So this has three different functions to it. The first function is going to be a, a electro and EMF meter, um, just like the one that I handed over to Karen. Only yours is actually going to go much higher because it has a much bigger barometer on it. And so anything above 2.5, I want to know what's going on. What would be first, second, or the dots? So that way we can debunk things or not. The bottom number is ambient temperature. If Chuck finds something on his camera, you and I can debunk it or prove it with this little yellow probe right here at the top that's measuring the air around it. The last thing that it has. You'll be alright. It'll be just fine. Trust me. It's easy stuff. Because we're not going to use everything at every single location. This antenna that I just pulled out, everybody, is what we call a REM pod or a motion sensor. If something gets close to this antenna, it's going to go off. I'm not touching it right now. I'm touching it now. There's a whole different array of color and tones with that. We're going to talk about that two stops from now when we start using it. So for now, focus on the red numbers. Get used to those. 2.5 and higher. Got it. Got it. See? A lot easier than you thought. Simple! All right, everybody. Everybody's geared up, right? So, Brody's in charge. Let me know what happens. No, I'm kidding. Don't go anywhere. You guys all stop like this. Somebody else in charge? Don't follow me. It's only because he has a hat. So, that's the only reason why. All right, so, you guys are going to make me talk all night. I'm going to take a quick drink before I tell you why we started. So, is this name found anywhere? There's a reason why we start here, everybody. So, Big John's Tavern behind me. The place is haunted. Of course it is. That's why we started here. So, here's what goes on. Well, first off, we need to know this place used to be owned by a football player. His name is Big John Kennedy. Yes, he named it after himself. Now you know where the name came from. He played for the 1947 New York Giants. Whenever I'm telling you the history of a location or a space, I'm going to slow down on specific keywords that often come through. Over here, it would be 47, New York, Giants, anything relative to a bar, and the name John. So again, you guys are going to get the gist of that in the next class with the But anyway, here's why it's haunted. John used to sit in the back of the bar. And he would tell the bartender if the cadet that was coming over from the dinner room, if they were old enough to drink. And one night two guys came in, they weren't old enough to drink. Big John had the bartender throw him out. So the two guys left pretty mad. They came back the next night and tried to steal the cash register from the front of the bar. John saw what was going on at the back of the bar, slammed down his beer, and went over and he starts pounding these guys into the floor. Like, crazy killing him, right? A couple of gunshots him. John gets grazed in the neck, but the bullet landed behind him in the wall. After being the only one that's been shot, John gets up and goes back to the bar and tells the bartender to get him another beer, get the two guys on the floor, and ambulance. Here's the irony of the story. I'm dying that story. Normally, if I tell you a building haunted, you ought not to think of some kind of tragic death. What's haunting this place is that bullet hole. The legend is still here. Even if it's not, and this new renovation of Big John's filled it in, Big John's blood is now sealed inside the building. People that sit in the front tend to get a little queasy, nauseous, or headache. This is why we're here. This is your food of warning. We're seeking out paranormal activity tonight, and I don't know how it's going to affect any of you. Then I can't make the ghosts do anything because they're not on the payroll. However, if anybody feels any of those symptoms, I need to know immediately so we can move the whole group, blame the <coughs> humidity first, and get that person to safety. Not everything is going to be considered paranormal, but I do put out that warning. Dottie's looking at me like, what the hell did we sign up for? <laughs> so, cheesecake. Okay. So, let's get our minds off our own health, because that's probably the scariest thing I'm going to tell you all night long, because it deals with your own health. We had a big earthquake here in 1886. If you didn't already know that from another history here, we do now. This building is allegedly where the first death occurred from that earthquake. So, the white mansion you see in the middle of the building also went to on the front. Piece of it broke off, hit somebody in the back of the head, and killed him. And they say you can see his ghost in the middle of East Bay Street in the middle of the night. I don't have any proof of that story. That's why I say apparently and allegedly a lot with that one. It's just a great segue, so Dottie's not thinking about getting sick on the tour. So even though I just brought it up again. All right, is everybody ready to go go something? Yes. Comer's like, yeah, let's get yes. the hell off the street corner. It's weird. All right, we're gonna go this way.
numbers did you get? I had bird, and now I have could. Could? I thought you had foot. So like, we have like foot as in football? Yeah, could. All right, so, welcome to the big red barn. We're not going to spend a lot of time here. It's just a great example to explain your devices even further and to answer any questions before we deep dive into history. This is where we keep some of the horses for your carriage rides. Some of you might be able to smell them. I'm out here seven nights a week. I cannot smell them. So, with that said, the history here is very, very simple, and I made it that way on purpose. This is the same red barn that held horses that used to deliver milk and eggs to the residents of Charleston. That's it. 1860s to 1920s, 1930s approximate. So, with that being said, the key words here are going to be delivery, milk, and eggs. But let's talk about all of those communication devices that I handed out. So, that would be, obviously, the crazy Ouija board, the spirit boxes, the word list, all of these devices. What's the first question everybody wants to ask when they get that kind of device, like a Ouija board or a spirit box? How do they use it? How do you use it? There's a lot of funny... Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you more about it. But I, right now, I have the settings to where it's, it's a good start. Um, but what's the first question you ask a ghost when you get a Ouija board? Or box. Are you friendly? Are you friendly? That's a good one. What else? Your name. What's your name? What's your name? Are there any ghosts here? Are there any ghosts okay. here? And are you friendly? Those are my two examples I'm going to use. Because if we ask that question, and then uh, who has a spirit box? And Gabby hears the word no. That means somebody is not or not friendly, obviously, or somebody's actually here. So they just lied to us that they weren't here. <laughs> they said no, right? So we are not going to be asking yes or no questions all night long. We're going to be going after actual specific details. Even if you're here as a skeptic and you're just here to have fun, paranormal evidence does not come out of yes and no answers. When I'm teaching you guys how to use these devices, it's more like if somebody's here, tell me what color the big red barn is. That's a question we already know the answer to. So. The word, re I say looking and, and listening, is because Dottie actually has a word list. But the rest of you are using basically DJs and song lyrics to convey messages back to us. The word red might not be available for them to be able to convey it back. Uh, fire truck, blood, heart, those three things are specifically red. I would take that as an acceptable answer. What color is the big red barn? Blood. I'm good with that. However, most of the time, I'm going to require something else is going on to be able to verify and come close to calling it paranormal. Another example. Let's say Dottie's word list has the word art on it. That doesn't mean anything to us over here. Um, but then Melinda actually hears the, the number 40 on her spirit box. Put them together, Art Faircloth was number 40 on Big John's team. You see now how this is more of an escape room than it is a ghost tour? Because again, we're going to be putting clues together like at, through all of these devices that you guys are holding. So I think you guys all have a much better gist of what your communication devices are, except for trying to keep ones more a little bit more explanation about the little knobs on there. Uh, cameras, there's three of them in play tonight. Um, with those three cameras, we're going to be in spaces where there's gonna be parked cars and people walking by. People don't like their cars to be filmed and they definitely don't like to be filmed themselves. Yours is very easy, so you're holding a cell phone, it's very easy to hide. However, with yours, Gil, again, when I say like, Andy's coming, you're gonna point yours directly at the ground. Um, so we're not gonna be filming cars. Um, so let's talk about these cameras for a quick second. So Chuck, with yours, you're going to try to do two things for us. Um, I know I said don't film people, but I do want you to try to keep one of us in view. We're the warmest thing out here. Mm -hmm. So that gives you the array of color and much easier to find cold spots that way. The other thing you're going to try to do is keep the sky out of view. The reason why, the blue dot that I pointed out is going to default to the sky every time it's in view. Um, and it just kind of takes things away. It's looking for a surface in the sky and there isn't one. So again, if you can, uh, try to keep the sky out of view. Uh, where are my lasers at? So Unia and Gil. So go ahead and point one. Yeah, perfect. So point one on the ground. You want to point it a little bit further in front of you because your shoes are very sparkly. Um, so when you're actually perfect, I was going to say you don't want to point down at them, Gil. You want to make sure you're going through it because we're looking for something here. And I may have given the lasers to the wrong person. I didn't realize you had sparkly shoes on. It might give us some false positives. Okay. Uh, um, no, let's just try to, try to keep it just off your feet. Yeah, that's perfect right there. So I mean, you guys will be able to move things around as we can. Long, but um, basically, Gil, you're going to be filming through the lasers. You don't want to necessarily look directly down at them like what you're doing right now because we already know what the red square looks like. We want to see what the ghost looks like. Does that make sense now? Mm -hmm. Yeah, perfect. There you go. Normally, I tell you guys to like stand like one to three feet away so that way you can actually get the full just in the frame. Um, so, and lasers aren't always going to be in play, so that camera is great for capturing orbs as well. So, I'll kind of give you always the safe spaces of when we can use lasers, but I think you guys have the good gist of that. Um, the only other person I need to talk to will be at the next stop, and it's going to be Amanda with her Melmeter. Um, so we're going to chit-chat after I give the history of that location. Are you guys ready to get away from football players and ponies? Because I am. Let's go deep dive into history. We're going to go this way. Okay.
Find something. Yeah. Believer. Oh, we'll see. Am I supposed to hold this up the whole wall? Okay. I traded. Okay. Got it. All right. So, welcome to your legitimate first space at this point. So first off, all of you communication device people, so your spirit boxes, Ouija boards, you know, all of those kind of things, I am not going to be giving you questions like what color is George Washington's white horse, like what we did over there with the red barn. You're going to get the answers from your spirit boxes, and yes, I'm going to withhold information on purpose, so that way you guys actually have a genuine experience. So, where the heck are we? We are at the Charles and Eliza Pinckney Mansion site. Their mansion sat in the front of this space, facing East Bay Street. Eliza's garden was lined up with Five Church Restaurant and came all the way across. We are standing where the servant slave quarters used to be. So, who the heck were these people? Charles and Eliza had a son named Charles, and they had a nephew named Charles. That's three different Charleses. Do you guys see now why we look for those secondary clues and verifiers so we know which Chuck we're chatting with? Makes it, you're going to see a lot of these names are going to be rather repetitive as we kind of go through each location. But anyway, the son and the nephew, they were actually signers of the Constitution for South Carolina. It's a pretty big deal for people that love politics, but I don't. I hate politics. So, we're going to move on to Eliza. Eliza has a much cooler story. Eliza Pinkney, she married Charles at a very young age according to today's standards. For all of you communication device people, if you're going to ask Eliza how old she was when she married Charles, you're not going to hear numbers from the colonial times that she came from, like 12 and 14. Think of today's standards, those are the numbers that you should be searching for. Sometimes we get Charles's age because he was over double her age when they married. Kind of a creepy age gap back in the 1700s, definitely a creepy age gap now. But anyway, she married Charles because her father was over in England, where they're from. He thought he was dying. He was trying to bring all his children home one last time. Eliza didn't believe he was dying. So she got married. 1744. You don't get married for a green card in 1744 because we're not even a country. Instead, she did marry him out of love. And she was correct. Dad did not die right away. Instead, he starts sending her gifts from England to this space. One of those gifts happened to be the plant seeds of indigo. If you guys have been in town for at least an hour that I know of, you've seen the word indigo somewhere. I can promise you that. Indigo is a plant that makes blue dye that makes our blue jeans blue. Some of us are wearing it tonight because that's how we use it today. However, when Eliza got the seeds, she didn't know what to do with them. She had to learn from her slaves how to keep them cultivated. And when she figured it out and experimented with it, it's not always hot here, by the way, she moved it to another plantation, got hold of her father, and said, rice plantations are going downhill. We're going to make a killing with this indigo. And now we have an international business woman during colonial times. So, something absolutely unheard of, by the way. That's the business of Eliza. That's kind of the boring stuff. Let's get into the weird stuff, because that's why you guys are all here, right? Um, so with the spirit box, I'm gonna kind of go through a series of questions of something for you guys to focus on. Um, and if you wanna pick another question of something I gave to somebody else, by all means do so. Keep in mind, with all of these communication devices out here and all the cameras and voice recorders running, your answers can go anywhere. If uh, Melinda's asking basically how old she was, uh, the answer can actually come up over here to Brody. We never know where it's going to actually fall. There's a lot of devices out here. So let's kind of go through it. Yours being a little bit more of a difficult one to listen to, the mansion's not here anymore. Find out what happened to it, and if you get an answer, find out when it happened. Obviously, I'm giving you a clue that it was a tragedy, so I'll kind of keep that in mind. With yours, we're still experimenting. I want you to just cherry pick off what I give everybody else. Dottie, with yours, Eliza was the second wife named Eliza for Charles back to back. The first wife died in January of 1744. Five months later, he marries the one we just talked about in May of 1744. Ironically, both Elizas have a maiden name that starts with the letter L. 
to figure out which Eliza we're dealing with, and then go after the marriage question and see if you can get some numbers out of it. That would be interesting. The children for you. I told you there's at least one. There are more. You can ask how many, what their names are. That's it. The reason why, there's a tragedy. Don't poke the bear. Okay. We'll all know it. Trust me. Um, with yours, Eliza's death. Ask anything you want to. How old she was, where she's buried, what she died from. Which president was a pallbearer at her funeral? So again, very specific questions. And I think actually, you guys, it's funny, you guys were all in a row. Um, with yours, you, I want you to focus on what happened to the mansion as well. That one kind of gives us one to two syllable terms. So again, those ones are very simple to actually come out. So we're going to see if it actually pops out of there. So what happened to the mansion, and then when did that happen? So those are going to be the major focus questions for you. Um, so we're going to get you started recording, because we haven't done that yet. That's the right button all the way at the top. So now you should be recording. Um, lasers are safe in here. Make sure the lasers do not go on vehicles. They will set off car alarms. So no, again, no pressure at all on the lasers. So it's usually the last tool that I actually bring out of the lasers. Um, but again, nice slow movements out of all cameras. Um, and then with yours, Karen, just make sure you're standing very still when you're taking pictures. We are going to spread out in this location. We're not going to go near vehicles or in between vehicles. The only reason we're back here by this particular vehicle is because I know the person that drives it. I'm friends with them. She runs the, the candy shop in the corner. So again, I know she parks over here. We're good. All right, let's spread out. I actually have to keep, yes. Can I press the record button or leave it on camera? Uh, we're going to go pictures. So uh, when it does shut, because it will shut off from time to time, the power button's right next to it. So I'm sure you figured that one out already. All right, so where is, so I do have to work with Amanda, so I'm going to keep you behind. Everybody else, let's start spreading out and recording. I'm going to be with you all in a minute to start jotting down notes. Liza, where was your garden? Point it out. Where did you first plant indigo? How did you die? Is anyone buried here? There's two? Yeah. I'm not sure if they're trying to say I buy something or BYU. Buy. Mm, buy you. Like, it's a very yeah. interesting sort of weather. BYU. That's why I was. Ask her questions. See if she'll respond. What was I supposed to ask her again? What happened in the mansion? Yep. What? When did she die? When did it. When did the mansion burn? Did it burn? Where's Dottie? There she is. Hey, where is she? I think she's over there. Liza, is your ghost here? If your ghost is here, show us your color blue. Presence. In the shape of a person. Show us your presence in the shape of a person. 
That is blue. Eliza, did the mansion burn down? Did someone die here? Camera, yeah. you know, always follow up unless you see something like right away. Um, so it, for me, it's all about watching it on a much bigger screen because I do send them to YouTube. Sure. So just nice slow movements. That's that makes a nice video to watch. You got yep. a, a little cold window in, in the backdrop I can see. Yeah. And it can't see through glass. That's the weird thing about it. I thought it would, but it doesn't. It only looks at surfaces. Anything coming up on yours, yet, Brody? So I'm pretty sure it's been in and out. At least two times I heard a note, but it was like that little bit of transformed into the radio, so it was like the same song. It sounded like that's the same beat, same song. So that's part of the reason why we don't go to yes and no questions. Because you can ask, hey, Eliza, what happened to you? And then obviously we're looking for something that's not a yes or no. Yeah. So we can correct that assumption that they don't have. We can just try to answer it. So see if we can find out when it happened, what month it happened. It was something that's important to the guy. Out of 17, sorry, we got kind of cut off. You're good. Not yet. Okay. So you're getting the gist of how to listen to it? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. You know the radio station. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Um, and no matter how silly you think it is, like if you hear drop it like it's hot, I want to know that you heard drop it like it's hot. Okay. So okay. again, it's not about this who's singing, it's about what the lyric is. Right. So it's, it's different than this. Okay. Right. Okay. Any other readings besides 17? Well, there's 6.8. Okay, I'll take the 6.8. Okay. But again, let's go above that 17 from here forward. Okay. See if you're getting anything else higher that, than that. And that nice. kind of confirms what um, Karen found over here earlier, because she did get up to a 15, but it went away really, really fast. That did too. It so, was like an instant. And I asked a question when she found the 17, just to see. So, you're on the right track. Keep on moving. You got this. Everybody keeps me pretty busy, man. I gotta <laughs> I bounce all over. I gotta write down a ton all of notes. Over. All over. That's what it's all about. a matter of like I had a direct descendant on right. the tour, which right. is really cool for right. me, yeah. being a, a writer in history. I and wonder if he seek you out. He did. June is relevant. 59 and 51 is not relevant here. That I know. You got anything? 
I'm just paying and I can't, can't I can't say what I've gotten anything to tell you the truth. Come on. You've got something else? Come on. Come on. I've had a guy, Patty. Yeah, I've, yeah, I've had Patty O. Like P A D Y O. Did you tell him? I, I did tell him about this. He said it's like nothing. In Over here. Which which one or just uh, the, the red top? Square. Yeah. Yep. Where's my lasers? So tell her I'm gonna have you kind of stand over there by that yellow wall, and Gil, you're gonna stand over there, and you're gonna be filming through. So point one of your lasers basically right where Dottie's standing. Um, <laughs> um, so Gil, I'm gonna actually have you down at the end so that way we get a nice full picture. So in the event something actually passes through that laser, we'll be able to capture it on this film. And you're recording good. Chuck, you're good. All right. So. Go ahead and turn those spirit boxes down. They are a quiet area. We don't spend a lot of time here. So again, this is a great spot. I'm excited already because we already got one of the names I commonly hear. So tell me what you guys have heard, what we have. Did you guys hear anything besides names? I got food shopping. shopping. Um, we heard I need a new phone. What is it? I, I need a new phone. I need a new phone. <laughs> yeah. Is that what you're asking me? No. No, <laughs> no we asked what they said. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> Um, any other things that you guys may have heard? I heard cash. 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 cash food, uh, food, yeah. Food, yeah. Food, yeah. Melinda, what do you got on yours? I don't know if I heard Bobby. It's usually your first Ooh. instinct. What? Usually. Yeah. All right, any names or anything pop up on your word list? Like seal and visit. Seal? Like the animal. Like or seal of approval. Or seal of approval. Okay. And visit. Visit. So here's what I'm excited about. Um, as we were leaving the Pinkney Mansion site, uh, the name Ben showed up on the Ouija board. That's one of the two names that I hear commonly down here, or that you guys hear and that you guys tell me about. So let me tell you exactly where we are first. When we crossed that last crosswalk, sorry, I was trying to keep up with the boys. They were like running down here, so <laughs> we'll blame the guys on this one. Um, but anyway, that's where the original Charlestown Wall used to be, where that last crosswalk was. It went up Cumberland, and we're gonna talk more about that later, but that means where we're standing now is one of the first streets we ever had here in Charleston. I have the full list of residents of every single person that's ever lived here. It's not a very lengthy list, and I get the same two names that you guys tell me pretty much every six to seven weeks. Those names are Benjamin, which we already have Ben, and the name John. So, not very significant, right? But there was only two to five people that lived down here at a time. Benjamin and John both lived down here in 1801. There were four different Johns that lived down here, um, but I would tell you that that particular John likes to give us his last name as well, all in the same evening. His last name was Johnson. Yes, his mother was evil. She named him John Johnson. So, I know, right? Um, but again, we'll get all three of those names in the same evening every six to seven weeks. In that loop right now, we're on week two. I wasn't necessarily expecting a Ben or a John. That's why I'm stoked, because this kind of throws off the curve a little bit. Here's why this is happening. We're going to let this group kind of pass through. Oh, you're good, you're good. Whoa. Yeah, watch all the water, guys. Whoa! Go for it. Yeah. Go for it. So, the stones you're standing on, these are Belgian blocks. So these bricks have been here since at least 1739 that we know of. Even the historians can't get it right. So, again, it's what we know. Here's what's weird about the bricks. They're made of granite. They're not supposed to hold any type of electricity or electrical charge whatsoever. <laughs> So, Amanda, I'm going to have you pick any brick you want as long as it's dry and put your device directly on the brick. Like, set it down and see if we get any numbers. Anything above 1.1 I'll be excited about. Um, and at times, it'll go all the way up to 5, 6, and the highest I've ever seen it go is about 15. These bricks, that basically the stone tape theory states that earthly materials that have been in the same space for a long period of time can hang on to the memories of the things that occurred here the stone tape theory and then replay it basically on our electronic devices. So do we have any numbers showing up at all? It was 1.3. Now it's 1.0. Okay, 
Earth. So basically, that's natural from the Earth. I'm going to call it so you can go ahead and pick it up. I'm not getting any readings from it. But again, I can't prove the full stone tape theory until we collect enough data to see the repetitiveness of it. With Ben showing up tonight, like that's a weird one because it's in the middle of a weird curve. Before people lived here, the Freemasons had a Masonic Lodge here. Okay, this is, we're in Lodge Alley. That's where it gets its name from. We will get terms relative to the Freemasons, including Mason, Brick, uh, Seal. That's why I was kind of like, oh, maybe that would be something along with that. We do get the word symbols a lot. Um, and the word Illuminati loves to come up on the spirit boxes that Melinda and Gabby are using. So again, funny thing about Illuminati, you normally hear as we're walking into the space and we're listening to radio stations there. Who the hell's talking about the Illuminati yeah. on the radio? That's the first question. Second reason, you only hear it in this space. Six times last year, three times this year. Again, I count that one because it's so weird. You get it often. So again, I can't make this stuff up, guys. I wish I could, but I'm not that good of a storyteller. Really not. Um, so this space, again, we don't spend a lot of time in. I'm sure you're getting hot. It holds a lot of humidity down here. We're going to go to another alley from here. Now, I have been booted out of there. So um, the funny thing is, is I'm going to try to sneak us in on the one end. It's residential on the opposite side. So depending on how busy it is, I'll sneak us in on the one side and tell you what goes on down there. Otherwise, we'll go to the outside of it. Um, but we're going to be cutting through a neighborhood to get to that alley. So when we exit this alley, you're going to stop your video recordings because we don't record people's houses. So again, we're going to stop those videos as we exit. Um, definitely keep listening to your spirit boxes, and I'll see what part of the alley we can actually get to. So if you have a muted spirit box at this point, go ahead and unmute them, and let's go see what we can capture at the next one. Chuck, you're gonna kind of go either one way or the other. If another tour decides to come down here, obviously we're not gonna film them. So just here kinda, they come. Um, yeah, perfect. Yeah, they all kind of come through. Um, so just kind of keep in mind, um, we're gonna part the seas here because they're probably gonna go down halfway. So I'll stay on this side. You guys kind of uh, go on the other side. Look at that. Perfect. All right. So deal with yours. Um, point your camera probably down that way and just kind of keep it still um, at a nice like waist height so that way nobody is getting filmed besides us. Um, Spirit boxes that are noisy, go ahead and mute them for me. Um, sounds like we've got it all under control. Do we have anything else here coming up on your screen? Hello. Hello. What do you guys have? Baby mama. Baby mama. <laughs> Believe it or not, the word baby is relevant to the space that we're going to talk about next. So, again, we get bleed over in certain certain locations. So, I'm excited about baby mama showing up. I also have conception. Do you really? Also, I got 11.3 walking here, like leaving the. 11.3? Leaving for, the lodge. Wow. Alley. Oh my God, Jesus Christ. Oh We're near the church. Religious terms, Jesus show, Christ. Yep, <laughs> religious terms show up all the time. So preacher, Bible, Jesus, we get them all the time. And it usually starts up when we're exiting Lodge Alley. So, and again, the, the call of steeple we have is right there. So we get it all the time. So let me check up real quick. So we had, uh, I got the 11.8. We had baby mama. Anything else while we've been here? I'm excited about these two. These two together, like that's a big deal. So we're going to talk about that next. So what the heck are we in now? Oh, what is um, that? I would be careful with the lasers down here, Summer. Yeah. yeah, people get a little funny down here with the lasers. Oh, oh, there's there's a a here. So what is this place? This is Philadelphia Alley. Philadelphia Alley used to be called Duelers Alley. This is where some of the duels used to occur for the city of Charleston. So this thing was always an alley. There's a bunch of different purposes, but mainly most ghost stories are going to tell you about the duel that occurred down here that we can actually prove. I tell it a little bit differently because you're ghost hunting. You guys need different details on what they're telling up there. So here's how it goes. A doctor moves down here from Rhode Island. His name is Dr. Joseph Brown Ladd. His name comes up all the time, so we want to slow down on it. But he moves down here because his fiance, Amanda, just inherited a bunch of money from her dead parents. She has an attorney helping her out with all of this cash flow. And the attorney thinks that Dr. Ladd is just after her money. So she tells Amanda, get rid of this doctor guy. He's just going to take all your money. 
He's per- obviously a family law lawyer. 1800s, who knows? It's probably general practice. Um, so Dr. Ladd moves to Charleston to try to prove that he's not just after a man's money. The coachman that brought him into town set him up to be robbed and killed. It wasn't a good start to his stay in Charleston. Somebody walking by, a local, and somebody who lived here, his name is Ralph Isaacs, he saw what was going on and he stopped the whole thing. But I'm going to stop on Ralph for a second because Ralph has the same initials as where the doctor came from. Ralph Isaacs, Rhode Island. Even before we had the Ouija board, R I would show up on your spirit boxes randomly, especially yours. R I U. R I U. So, Ralph says, Doctor Lad, you don't want to stay here. I don't know you, but I know this guy, and he's going to try to kill you and take all your money. You can stay with friends of mine at 59 Church Street, and you'll be safe. So he takes the offer, and the two of them become friends. The longer the doctor stays here, the more money he's making. His practice is taking off. A man is moving down soon because he proved his point. He becomes known as the Whistling Doctor because he whistled all the time. It's the late stuff. Is. And keep in mind, every haunted city you're ever going to visit in the future has a cliché whistling ghost. I can almost bet my paycheck on it. But we actually have proof of this one. Back to the doctor and Ralph. They go see plays together, but they can't sit next to each other. Why? The doctor makes more money. He gets better seats. So they talk about plays on the way home. One night after seeing Richard III, they're arguing over the new actors. Dr. Ladbush is fantastic. Ralph, not so much. So it gets a little bit more heated. And they're going to do it. Um, so we'll seats to let them come through. That was kind of the <laughs> pick him up, they carry him home to 59 Church Street where he was living, and he dies 10 days later after refusing medical treatment. You have to remember, this guy's a doctor. He probably tried to bleed out this bullet himself. So, the campfire part of the story that everybody around us is telling is that as you walk through, you can hear the whistle from the doctor. Keep in mind, if you're going to do this on your own, other than listening to the voice recorder that I'm providing for you, and you can use your voice recorders from your phone, every local knows this story. Anybody walking up and down Cumberland or Queen Street throws a whistle down the alley, I do it every single night. We're going to end over there. My garage is over there, so I have to pass the alley. If my daughter's on the tour, we race to see who's going to throw the whistle first. So again, it's just a police scene with the tour guy coming through with the whistle. We all do it. Um, especially since I've been booted out of here rushing fortunate enough to actually snuck us in on this corner because the owner of that mansion down there will probably recognize me. Let me tell you how I got booted out of here. This is a fun part. Jeff's like, let's do this. So, this alley didn't always come all the way through, which means it was blocked off on this side. I would take my folks kind of through this little guy right here, and we would go all the way down the alley after I told them the story, and show off the bricks on the other side because they're older. Those were sun-dried bricks from slave children. There's a full handprint and fingerprint swipes off to the side. I'm sure you all have picked up by now I'm all about actual legitimate history. I'd show them off, but I don't expect a reading out of them because that kid's not staring at that brick in the afterlife. However, my groups always wanted to huddle around it and try to get a reading, a spirit box, or something like that. November 26th of 2020, that's exactly what they did. They're all huddled around that one brick trying to get a reading. I'm trying to shoot them away, but it's outside the dining room window of the beautiful mansion at the end of the alley. It is residential where tour guides are not allowed to be. The owner came out screaming. My daughter thought it was great because dad's getting yelled at, and we moved on. The next day was Thanksgiving. I did not have a tour. November 28th, yes, these dates are relevant. I'll get to it. November 28th, I get a phone call asking me to go down halfway, which is what we're allowed to do, or to reroute my entire group. Normally, I would go down this way, and over the whole other part of the city, I would show a few folks, but again, now we go this way. So I told my team it's not fair to take my 10 to navigate around 20 to 60 and try to investigate. I don't believe in the story I'm about to tell you, but we're going to see what happens. I'm a vampire guy, not a pirate person, which is what we're about to discuss next. So, before we leave, somebody hears the name Anne on a spirit box. I did not tell that team that we are going to be investigating female pirate Anne Bonnie. So I'm like, alright, maybe we'll be getting something. The number 300 shows up on another spirit box once I told them the little bit I did know about piracy. 
I didn't know what that meant. So I was doing a research the next day, and it turns out we were there on November 28th of 2020, and Bonnie's trial for piracy was November 28th of 1720. We were there on the exact 300 year anniversary of her pirate trial. So now I keep taking you guys back up there. And again, I've read more damn pirate books than I ever wanted to in my lifetime, <laughs> trying to put a factual tour together on a piece of lore. So again, everything we're going to discuss up there, it is a hit or miss location. You guys have actually been doing really well so far, so I'm actually excited. I haven't had a tour, you know, this active in real time in quite a few weeks. It's been kind of weird. So we're gonna learn about piracy, but we're gonna talk about that baby in the conception piece that we have once we get up to that next location. Um, do we have anything else that showed up that we need to know before we move on? Stress, hunting, and glance. Glance or glance? Glance. Like, okay. like look at them. Any letters show up on yours? Uh, just A C H O S and N Y. Um, anybody been listening to their spirit box that has an earbud in that I don't know? I know it's hard to concentrate on me and the spirit box at the same time. All right. I've been listening. I haven't heard it. All right, so as we exit, well, you guys with the recorders, just be discreet as we're kind of cutting through. You can keep them running. But we're going to head up to the powder magazine at this point. Um, once we get past that group, those of you that are muted, um, to Tina and Brody, you guys can unmute it again once we get past them. Everybody gets jealous because they see the crazy equipment, so mm -hmm. we don't want to interrupt them. <laughs> I'm going to go back over this in the train. <laughs> it's up to you. You can head back over. We're you got right. a few minutes? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to bounce okay. on with everybody. I'll do that and come back. If they are, turn the cannons on. Story, you're not realizing that her hair is indeed red. 
this is Ann Bonnie. This is one of the few pictures you can find of her with a shirt on. The reason why is because she used to bare her breast to show men that they were just killed by a woman. I told you she was kind of a badass. Um, and again, I get teenage boys on this group, and I don't need angry moms and grandmothers walking away from here. So again, she has a shirt on. That's the reason why I show this particular painting. The name of her parents, William Cormack and Mary Brennan. None of you were expecting a secondary Mary. Somebody heard Mary. Who else? You heard Mary, didn't you? So, again, we had one Mary, but I don't have another clue as to which. Because remember, we have Mary Reed, and we have now Mary Brennan, the, the mother, the, uh, the mistress. Calico Jack. Calico Jack, I like to show you what he looked like because everybody wants to know what the original Captain Jack Sparrow looked like. He was named Calico Jack because of the jackets that he wore. They came from the British captains that he killed. So in essence, fancy jacket, Calico Jack. That's where the name comes from. So the name of his ship is the Kingston. Normally, the word Kingston is not going to come through on radio stations. However, Unia has one that will actually pick up disembodied voices much better than the other ones. So I would expect it coming out of, for, out of hers or the word king from any other spirit box. Again, Kingston is a hard one to actually come up with. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start collecting all of your crazy gadgets and you guys can ask me a million more questions. You guys definitely kept me on my toes. I'm excited for this because you gave me a great 40% to start off with as I'm going through the tour or your tour data in the morning. Speaking of which, I know I talk a lot. You guys haven't asked me questions yet. But tomorrow morning, when I start going through your data, it only takes me about two to two and a half hours. I'm normally done by noon once everything is uploaded. So it's easy to save. Your audio pieces, right click them, they're MP3s. Save them to your computer. When I, that does actually happen, which only